welcome back to our very first Pipix Assembly here on campus. It is no secret that COVID has definitely brought down our spirits, although this is why the particular theme of this Pipix Assembly is bringing back the energy. We hope that this assembly reignites some energy in you as well as the very passion you have for the batch. We will begin with the prayer by Maranga. Hey everyone, please bow your ears. Dear God, I thank you for gathering us here today, safely under this roof. I ask that you just bless each and every person in this hall. May we strive to get through these tough times and please keep us motivated. Amen. And now for the Bible verse, we'll be having Abby. Um, Corinthians verse 4, lines 16 to 18. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. It has become difficult to remember how life has been prior to COVID, especially at the college. So the PFA body has taken it upon themselves to create a video with students across various grades, expressing their most memorable moments at the college, to remind each other of the energy and passion we once felt in those moments, and to look forward to feeling them again. So my most memorable moment at the college definitely had to be when um, I was in grade 10 with the rugby boys and we won our rugby league. Um, that was the first time, well not the first time, but one of the first teams ever to win the league at St. Peter's. Um, three of us actually landed in a spot on the Lions child side and I actually managed to get half counts for rugby. So I'd say um, that day it was electric. It was one of the best days of my life. The spirit was amazing. Hi college, so our most memorable moment at St. Peter's College is supporting our rugby boys up at the Tucking Stro on the Dolly. I mean it was so amazing just watching the whole school come together as one gigantic family, which is literally what we are. And um, like the spirit guys, it was just phenomenal. The hype was all there, everyone was there to support one big thing and yeah, thank you. Good morning college. My most memorable moment at St. Peter's is the very first tennis clinic I attended in grade eight. Everyone welcomed me with open arms and this is where I made friends that became my family. From the very first moment I joined the college, I found my second home and I don't know what could be more memorable than that. My favorite memory has to be the soccer season of 2019. Overall, we had good performances and came to the quarterfinals during the um, St. Peter's Fest. And overall, it's just a good year for soccer. Hi Mananda, Hi, I'm Kanye, and we're from First Team Basketball. Our most memorable moment at the college was Fest 2019. We are an undefeated team 2019 as well as 2020. And we beat St. Mary's Waverly. What? And Pretoria Girls. Everyone. And Bishop David. Chalbin. And who else? Crawford, Lonehill, and Sutton. Thanks. And also American International. All of them. All of them. Yeah, all of them. Once. My most memorable thing was getting turned up in the amphitheater on Thursday. Yeah. My most memorable moment at the college was my first day in grade 8. I remember arriving at school in my huge tracksuit and trying to make friends with everyone and just being so terrified to walk past the matrix. My most memorable moment was when we cheered on the 2020 matrix for their first rugby game. Hi college, so my most memorable moment here at St. Peter's College was right on our basketball court when my first team at the time in 2019 had won the St. Peter's Festival for the very first time. The event was absolutely amazing just because of all the energy and the passion that was seen on the day and it was just so nice to see the support 
of my school behind me when we scored that last goal. I have many memorable moments, but the one that sticks out the most for me is when I first came to the college. There were many people that I did not know and I was very shy, but I met the most amazing people and I'm still friends with them to this day. My favorite memory of St. Peter's is probably performing at the National Ice Safety. I performed my song and I got a diploma. We will not be having the poll right to me. Okay, hi school. Can you, okay, I'm going to be reading a poem by Michael Sage. I would have written my own, but like to be time. So it's called Keep On Keeping On. We've all had times when the going gets tough. The smooth ride suddenly feels bumpy and rough. The good times are gone, it's all rather grub. We later decide and explain, I've had enough. We all are entitled at times to ripen to moan. What's happened to my life, he said with a groan. My backpack seems way down by a very good stone. How do I move away from this miserable zone? When a comic ball hits you through a trick or con, remember the good days when the sun always shone. Go forward with the belief that you've already won. The best I can, advice I can give you is to keep on keeping on. We will not be having our head girl and head boy, Prestige and Justine, addressing us on the theme of bringing back the energy. Good afternoon, college. Wow, how I miss the good old days. Afternoons and weekends spent on the sports fields, screaming our lungs out for our first team rugby, rugby boys at the Derby Day. Thank you. <laughs> Watching it all, as our talented students dance up on stage, or being able to hug our friends whenever we wanted to. Days when there was nothing, where there was more smiling and less worrying. A year ago, nobody could have possibly imagined the situation we find ourselves in today. I guess we don't realize how good the good old days were until they were. Something that this pandemic has taught me is that you need to cherish and seize every opportunity you can get, because before you know it, Everything, everything can suddenly change. Even though things may be really tough right now, the struggle you're in today is developing the strength you need for tomorrow. Being challenged in life is inevitable, but you have the choice to decide how you will react to these situations. So school, how are we going to react to this situation? Just as all families come together in trying times, we as St. Peter's family need to unite and carry each other through this most difficult time. And let's remember that family means no one gets left behind or forgotten. Something that I want to leave with you today is that although the world is a very scary place right now, at least we have each other. Let's make the most of what we have and carry on making good memories that we can cherish forever. So together, let's seize this opportunity because opportunities like this don't come twice. Be positive, be hopeful, and bring back the energy. Thank you. But yet, the saying is that high school is supposed to be the best years of your life. What does that even mean? Two contradictory statements. Let me explain. So, COVID 19 last year brought us what would have been a very special year. From coming in the morning, the fish and tea that you do, the shake your boy's hand, or giving that special hug to that one special person that's been on your mind since you went to bed the previous night. But nowadays, but nowadays, giving a hug to someone, or early, 
a front row seat to a Friday detention. <laughs> but that's not even the worst part. Academically, the church of being bombarded with assistance every second day, creating evidence. They know that the marks that they produce this year will be essential for the university entrance. Great sense. This is where you decide your future. This is where you see where you, which direction you want to take for the future. Great nights, great eight, same thing. And the end of this hardship, we don't know where it will end. But what I can say is that I'm not here to stand before you to just tell about the negative things that have happened. But I'm here to think of the good times. The so called good times that we used to enjoy. Remember the days that we'll be on the, the two you feel, sorry, the Clyde Field, right next to the rugby boys, supporting them, cheering them on, mass pitting, whatever it might be. So they never grow the upwards when they absolutely destroy the competition. From the boss models being the first ever St. Peter's team to win the sports festival. A Friday afternoon with your boys, you play football on the two you feel. The only thing you have to worry about is the time when your parents will come and fetch you. You don't have to worry about masks, you don't have to worry about social distancing. Those are the best times of our lives. And again, to say, high school is meant to be the best years of your life. I'll tell you right now that that's fake news. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why that's fake news. There's a misconception. High school is not the best years of your life. High school is only the best years of your life, but you make it the best years of your life. You want to know why? You create your own happiness. No one can make it for you. The reason why you enjoy your time is because you made it fun for yourself. You knew what your interests were. That's how you created your own happiness. Now guys, I understand that in the midst of things that we are going through tough times, academically, sports-wise, and we have our own internal problems to figure out. But I promise you, right now, that if you create your own happiness, if you do what it is that makes you happy, if you do what it is that you love, at the college, with your friends, whatever it might be, I promise you, high school will be the best years of your life. And I'll say it one more time, high school is not the best years of your life. It's only the best years of your life if you make it the best years of your life. Now, 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 please do understand. When I say it's the best years of your life, I don't say go home, take your parents' car, start driving around, do what you want. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Don't do anything for temporary enjoyment. But long term, you think it will harm your future. But still, create your own happiness. Thank you. Emotional intelligence, coping mechanisms of stress, anxiety, and lows, 
and finding comfort with those around you. Grade 12, mental health, you'll know, you'll know why when you get to grade 11 and 12. Um, turning hobbies into personal future careers or side hustles, kickstarting your heart with side hustles, and prioritizing doing things that bring up your most authentic self. Today's aim in your unfiltered group is to focus on you guys' personal mental health, and I'll tell you why just now. During this transition from online school to in-person school. Now, it's this topic because we've noticed people attempt and are struggling with this huge part of work. So now I'm going to play a video speaking on how you can maintain and practice a good mental health. Thank you. When I was a kid, my mom and I made this deal. I was allowed to take three mental health rest days every semester as long as I continued to do well in school. This was because I started my mental health journey when I was only six years old. I was always what my grade school teachers would call a worrier, but later on we found out that I have trauma-induced anxiety and clinical depression. This made growing up pretty hard. I was worried about a lot of things that other kids weren't, and school got really overwhelming sometimes. This resulted in a lot of breakdowns, panic attacks. Sometimes I was super productive, and other days I couldn't get anything done. This was all happening during a time when mental health wasn't being talked about as much as it is now, especially youth mental health. Some semesters, I used all of those rest days to the fullest. Others, I didn't need any at all. But the fact that they were always an option is what kept me a happy, healthy, and successful student. Now I'm using those skills that I learned as a kid to help other students with mental health challenges. I'm here today to offer you some insight into the world of teenage mental health. What's going on, how did we get here, and what can we do? But first, you need to understand that while not everyone has a diagnosed mental illness like I do, absolutely everyone, all of you, have mental health. All of us have a brain that needs to be cared for in similar ways that we care for our physical well-being. Our head and our body are connected by much more than just our neck, after all. Mental illness even manifests itself in some physical ways, such as nausea, headaches, fatigue, and shortness of breath. So since mental health affects all of us, shouldn't we be coming up with solutions that are accessible to all of us? That brings me to my second part of my story. When I was in high school, I had gotten pretty good at managing my own mental health. I was a successful student, and I was president of the Oregon Association of Student Councils. But it was around this time that I began to realize mental health was a much bigger problem than just for me personally. Unfortunately, my hometown was touched by multiple suicides during my first year in high school. I saw those tragedies shake our entire community. And as the president of a statewide group, I began hearing more and more stories from students where this had also happened in their town. So in 2018, at our annual summer camp, we held a forum with about 100 high school students to discuss teenage mental health. What could we do? We approached this conversation with an enormous amount of empathy and honesty, and the results were astounding. What struck me the most was that every single one of my peers had a story about a mental health crisis in their school, no matter if they were from a tiny town in eastern Oregon or the very heart of Portland. This was happening everywhere. We even did some research, and we found out that suicide is the second leading cause of death for youth ages 10 to 24 in Oregon. The second leading cause. We knew we had to do something. So over the next few months, we made a committee called the Students for a Healthy Organ, and we set out to end the stigma against mental health. We also wanted to prioritize mental health in schools. With the help of some lobbyists and a few mental health professionals, we put forth House Bill 2191. This bill allows students to take mental health days off from school the same way you would a physical health day. Because oftentimes, that day off is the difference between feeling a whole lot better and a whole lot worse, kind of like those days my mom gave me when I was younger. So over the next few months, we lobbied and researched and campaigned for our bill, and in June of 2019, it was finally signed into law. Yeah. This was a groundbreaking moment for Oregon students. Here's an example of how this is playing out now. Let's say a student is having a really hard month. They're overwhelmed, overworked, they're falling behind in school and they know they need help. 
Maybe they've never talked about mental health with their parents before, but now they have a law on their side to help initiate that conversation. The parent still needs to be the one to call the school and excuse the absence, so it's not like it's a free pass for the kids. But most importantly, now the school has that absence recorded as a mental health day, so they can keep track of just how many students take how many mental health days. If a student takes too many, they'll be referred to the school counselor for a check-in. This is important because we can catch students who are struggling before it's too late. One of the main things we heard at that forum in 2018 is that oftentimes, stepping forward and getting help is the hardest step. We're hoping that this law can help with that. This not only will start teaching kids young how to take care of themselves and practice self-care and stress management, but it could also literally save lives. Now students from multiple other states are also trying to pass these laws. I'm currently working with students in both California and Colorado to do the same because we believe that students everywhere deserve a chance to feel better. Aside from all of the practical reasons and technicalities, House Bill 2191 is really special because of the core concept behind it, that physical and mental health are equal and should be treated as such. In fact, they're connected. Take healthcare, for example. Think about CPR. If you were put in a situation where you had to administer CPR, would you know at least a little bit of what to do? Think to yourself. Most likely, yes, because CPR trainings are offered in most schools, workplaces, and even online. We even have songs that go with it. But how about mental health care? I know I was trained in CPR in my seventh grade health class. What if I was trained in seventh grade how to manage my mental health or how to respond to a mental health crisis? I'd love to see a world where each of us has a toolkit of skills to help a friend, coworker, family member, or even a stranger going through a mental health crisis. And these resources should be especially available in schools, because that's where students are struggling the most. The other concept that I sincerely hope you take with you today is that it is always okay to not be okay, and it is always okay to take a break. It doesn't have to be a whole day. Sometimes that's not realistic. But it can be a few moments here and there to check in with yourself. Think of life like a long-distance race. If you sprint in the very beginning, you're going to get burnt out. You may even hurt yourself from pushing too hard. But if you pace yourself, if you take it slow sometimes intentionally, and you push yourself other times, you are sure to be way more successful. So please, look after each other. Look after the kids and teens in your life, especially the ones that look like they have it all together. Mental health challenges are not going away, but as a society, we can learn how to manage them by looking after one another. And look after yourself, too. As my mom would say, once in a while, take a break. Thank you.
best student, the smartest student, and the most hardworking student of the college, which we are looking for peer tutors. And this year we're doing it differently because anyone that has a passion for teaching or who wants to earn a service reward can join. So, um, yes, I'm not wrong. Peer tutor is now counts as a service reward. So if you want to have something on your blazer, you can think about it. So anyways, if you're interested, hit me up at peertutor at stpeterscollege.co.za or my personal email account, which is shihh at stpeterscollege.co.za. Thank you so much. From the Petri Party, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us today. We hope that this year is an eventful year full of love, peace and positivity. And that concludes our previous example. Thank you.